Matt Miller was a uh, Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame broadcaster at this radio station. Uh, worked here for how many years, Matt? 20, 29. 29 years. Mm, couldn't hit that 30. <laughs> couldn't do it. Could not get there. Uh, Matt uh, had an opportunity to uh, move into a different line of work. Prayed about it a lot. Uh, did so. And uh, found his second calling in life, uh, I think, with the Fellowship yeah. of Christian Athletes. And at the time, most of the people that I spoke with who found out you were leaving after their disappointment that you would no longer be here, and I was, of course, one of those people, uh, also uh, rejoiced in the fact that they couldn't think of a better person to take over FCA in the Eastern Panhandle than you. And that's a testament to uh, you as a person and to the relationships you built with people over the years, Matt. And you've now been doing this for two years full time, right? Yeah, it's hard to believe, yeah. isn't it? It was July of, uh, well, May of, uh, of 2021 when I had talked with Mike and, and was ready to make that announcement. And, uh, and then May of, of 21 began the process of fundraising in the missionary position with FCA and was able to go part time August of 21 and full time in January of 2022. So. Yeah, almost two full years. Uh, you took over for a fellow who used to be a football coach in the area. Yes, Daryl Hayes, who's uh, from Hedgesville, went to Hedgesville High School and um, came back to the area after college days. And, uh, yeah, coached uh, at various schools as an assistant coach as well as a little bit as a head coach, uh, including a time as an assistant coach with uh, Shepherd University. And um, he actually invited me to be on a, a board. We have what's called an advisory board. It's not an executive board. It's not one that hires and fires and so forth, but uh, is an advisory board to, you know, help provide direction and so forth with our organization in the area. Uh, by the way, we're looking for uh, some of those board members. If uh, that's something that, that a listener may be interested in, reach out to me and we can talk about that. But um, he asked if I'd be on that board in December of 2020 is when he called. So my first meeting, I will never forget. It was a, a kind of wintry weather day, and my wife was uh, doing her job. She's an interpreter for the deaf, and so I drove her over to Hagerstown. I forget one of the uh, FedEx, maybe one of the delivery places over there. And I did a meeting, and so I'm sitting in a parking lot on a Zoom meeting because we weren't meeting at that time in person. And um, I'm in a dark parking lot, so I was like a floating head in the Zoom <laughs> because it's completely dark all the way around and then just my face. And so that was my first introduction to a board meeting. Uh, but uh, a couple months later, it was March of, of 21, when uh, Daryl announced that he had taken a football coaching job in Texas and uh, would be leaving his role with, with FCA, and that's when it really all began. Um, I, I called him immediately, congratulated him on his, uh, his new role, and asked him immediately, give me more details about what you were doing with FCA, and that's when the whole process began. Yeah, the, the yeah. fire was lit. Yeah, it was, that, it was like, Lord, is this, is this where you want me? And uh, I, took, uh, I took his uh, resignation letter home. It was an email that he had sent. I, I showed it to my wife. Um, her first response was, uh, is this for you? And I said, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I almost uh, reached out to my pastor on four different occasions. Um, that, that was a Wednesday when I got that. And so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, I'm like, man, I, I want to I wanna let Pastor Lowell know about this and, and uh, you know, see what he's thinking, ask him to pray. And each time, I, I'm, phone is ready, I'm just going to hit the button and call him. No, don't do it. You know, the next day, all right, I'll text him. No, don't do it. I'll, I'll email him. So anyway, that Sunday morning, um, I saw him right at the end of our early service. And uh, and I had to leave because that was the year, remember, they moved the basketball season because of COVID right. and then allowed Sunday games. Morgantown was in town. They played Martinsburg on Saturday night, and they were playing Musselman on Sunday afternoon. So it was a real short time. I'm running up to the pastor going, hey, Lo, I'd like to talk to you, but I have to leave because I have to go call this game. And he said, well, I have something I need to talk to you about first. All right, I have no time, but go ahead. And he says, did you know Daryl Hayes left that position with FCA? I said, that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. And uh, when we did get together and talk, he told me the exact same story, that about three or four times from Wednesday to Sunday, he almost called, text, or emailed me. And each time felt the Lord just relax, just wait. And so, yeah, that, that was all the beginning of the process. That's uh, fascinating how 
two people are put in place hmm. to, yeah. help, to help each other make a decision, right? Amen. Yeah. And, so, and we think we have control. <laughs> Now, I, you know, I don't want control, to be honest with you. There are certain <laughs> things I do, right? Uh, uh, Mickey Rivers. Uh, remember Mickey oh, yeah. back in the day? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, center field. Yeah. The, the center. other Mick. Yeah. 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 And uh, spent a little bit of time with the Texas Rangers. Most will remember him as a New York Yankee, obviously. But uh, he spent a little time with Texas. And I remember reading as a kid, and don't ask me why this sticks in my brain other than just how crazy it sounds, but it's so true because he was he was kind of like Yogi Berra. He, mm -hmm. he would say things. He had a lot and, of malaprops. Yeah, it, it really good. And, and they asked him sometime, I guess it was about, uh, you know, pressured. Are you worried about a situation or something? And he said, well, th there ain't no sense in worrying about something you ain't got control over. Because if you ain't got control over it, there ain't no sense in worrying. And there ain't no sense in worrying about something you do got control over, because if you got control over it, well, there ain't no sense in worrying. <laughs> and uh, you think that through, and it, it, it's accurate, right? So, yeah. God, look, I know there are things that you do give me some control over in life, so let me not worry about those, but help me to make good decisions. But let me also understand there's a lot of things in life I have no control over, but God does, and so I can trust him in those things. And you've been... So. Uh, helping to build uh, in the Eastern Panhandle uh, and restore the Fellowship of Christian Athletes to uh, a point where you can have as, uh, as much opportunity to meet with young people in all the different schools as possible. And it has been so exciting. This year has really, really been neat. Um, we've had uh, 60 kids that have come to our, our uh, what we call huddles. It's, it's basically a short Bible study time. Um, most of the times we meet before school, so it's, it's not taking away from the school day in any way. And in athletics, a lot of practices and things are obviously after school. So uh, we'll, we'll tend to meet about a half an hour before the school day begins. And at, at South Middle School, we had 61 kids last Wednesday morning in the gymnasium. And a uh, little time of a game, um, they did the church clap, so uh, it's, it's a kind of dance move thing and and then uh, a short lesson uh, we our students as much as uh, they can uh, participate in sharing those lessons and we work with them to uh, be able to uh, put that together and then uh, a time of prayer and typically because it's morning donuts my donut budget is is very big right now and so uh, you know uh, after that hey off to first period class and so uh, we've got 50 that have uh, been coming to Martinsburg high schools uh, meetings on Friday mornings um, so, you you know, Musselman High School right now meeting once a month, trying to, um, you know, get that a little more steady maybe. But uh, there's 60, 70 that are coming to the auditorium in in, uh, in that facility. So, I mean, yeah, it's been really neat to see the number of kids that are coming out. Uh, we also started what we're calling Main Thing. Um, it's something that Martinsburg actually began back in 2007, I believe it was, a kind of a character development um, time after one practice each week. Last year, they turned it over to us at FCA and said, hey, why don't you guys take it? Uh, it really went well, and so this year we asked them, can we use the name? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. And so FCA has kind of confiscated that main thing. And so um, one day a week uh, after practice uh, with the coaches giving us which day works best, we're actually doing a, a Bible study with any of the players that want to stay after practice at Martinsburg, Hedgesville, Spring Mills, Musselman, Berkeley Springs, and Hampshire High School. So that's been really neat, too, to reach, again, another audience that may not be able to get there in the morning because mm -hmm. they ride a bus and it doesn't get there on time or whatever it may be, that still get a chance to stay after. And so uh, God's moving uh, in the hearts of young people, and it's it's really been neat. They face so many things, you know, in, in, in life today. Especially the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do they get Do they get donuts after school, too? Not after school. Um, occasionally, we may have some chips or other things. It depends <laughs> on the day that we meet. Um, the Martinsburg coaching staff does a great job of having some kind of snacks with them. And uh, Jim Winberg is a gentleman that came on our staff part-time this past year. And uh, he works uh, the, the group up at Musselman, and so he'll take some snacks there. Uh, when I go to Spring Mills, it's on Thursday, and they're getting ready for their meal. So I don't really have to take anything you know they do their walkthrough and then the team meal on thursday so i don't, I don't want to i guess i could bring an appetizer right take, well, take some boykin brownies judy boykin <laughs> brought the boykin brownies uh, which are legendary and yes. this morning they're on the kitchen table oh, there my. she brought some baggies for those who want to take some on the road so there you thanks go. for the heads up on that oh yeah if you get stranded <laughs> on a mountain like the donner pass party right if they'd had boykin brownies no cannibalism baby they, mm. those things would last you throughout the winter <laughs> Let me uh, let me ask this, Matt. Yes. Um, you guys had a big event recently. 
um, where you had a lot of fun. What is coming up? What what sorts of, of big events or big things do you have coming up for the kids, you know, the rest of the school year? Yeah, um, one of the ones that, that um, is coming at the end of October is our Fields of Faith. Um, typically, we've done that on a Wednesday night each of the last two years, um, about the second Wednesday in October, and that's a date that FCA kind of sets aside, so to speak, um, for groups all across the country and actually around the world. Uh, FCA is now in, I believe it's 107 countries wow. that, that they have ministry through athletics athletics and um, it's really grown uh, they, they didn't really get into the international ministry until about 10 years ago so in a decade it has really taken off um, but they um, they use it as an evening for peer-to-peer uh, -peer interaction is really what it's about so we have student athletes that are part of our Bible study groups that will share their testimonies uh, their God story we like to call it and um, and so we'll have a teen worship band that will lead us in some songs and music we'll uh, uh, typically try to have maybe some pizza and drinks uh, ahead of time and uh, and then at the end of the evening uh, close out in some prayer a uh, really neat time when you see the groups of, of students and adults because we invite the whole community to come to it um, and so it's really neat though to see them gather up in circles and uh, you know pray over various needs that may be on their hearts and minds well this year we decided Let's take it a step further. Instead of doing a Wednesday night, let's make it a, a whole weekend. So we're going to hold a Fields of Faith weekend here at the end of October. So it's coming up really quick. On Saturday, October 28th, we're going to do a fall banquet. So that'll be at the Holiday Inn on Foxcroft Avenue in Martinsburg. It'll be from about 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, you can arrive about 4.45 to kind of sign in. Um, we do need you to register online, though, ahead of time, just so we'll have our, our counts. And uh, we're really looking at that as kind of a, an evening of Thanksgiving. Uh, we're even going to plan to do a, a turkey and uh, stuffing and a potato and vegetable meal, uh, salad, bread, butter, uh, some red velvet cake at the end. You can't Ooh. beat that. Yeah. And so... Um, so that evening, we, we want to just be able to reach our community uh, and, and let them know what God has been doing through FCA over these last two years. Uh, this year, kind of a little more emphasis, but really over the last two years. And so we'll have a couple of our student athletes who are going to share, again, their God story. Um, we'll have a member of our board that will uh, give us a little bit of, of direction and so forth. I'll share a little bit of our recap. And then uh, we're going to have Cedric Pierman uh, coming in as our guest speaker. And uh, Cedric is a former NFL running back, spent about nine years in the league, seven of that with the Cincinnati Bengals and was an all pro I believe it was in 2015 and the neat connection there is um Cedric uh, was coached on the high school level by current Martinsburg principal Trent Sherman. Um, when uh, Trent came here and joined Coach Walker's staff early on, um, there was a span of, I believe it was about four years. I could be wrong on the overall time, but he was here for a couple of years and then was gone before coming back. And in that situation, he got a chance to go and coach with a, a college buddy who got a coaching job at a William Campbell High School in Virginia. And Cedric Pierman was one of his players oh, and uh, what was really neat is I didn't know that until this past summer uh, over the summer we were part of a, a regional camp that was held at Eastern Mennonite University down oh, in yeah. the yeah. beautiful campus oh, down absolutely there. amazing it, really and the, the cool part is we probably won't be there next year because the FC campus uh, FCA camp part of me has outgrown it we had 366 teams and almost 100 volunteers that's great that were a part of that sports camp that yeah. week and our speaker was Cedric Pierman and so I'd really enjoyed hearing him each evening. And so one of the days at lunch, I ran into him in the cafeteria just with a chance to say hi and thank him for his messages and so forth. And as we talked for a minute, he asked, where am I from? And I said, Martinsburg, West Virginia. And he said, so do you know Trent Sherman? And, of course, I had no clue of the connection at that time. And I'm like, well, yeah, he happens to be on our board and so forth. And the principal of Martinsburg, and he said, yeah, he was my high school coach. And we ended up in that conversation. And so we're really looking forward to having him here. He was he was tremendous. Um, you know, you're talking about a guy that 
you know, was was in the league and and played for years and to hear him share and then to watch his interaction with the the teens you know each evening afterwards to hang out and talk with them and share with them was really awesome so we're looking forward to that event that'll be october the 28th again at the holiday inn and how much matt Fifty dollars for an individual, seventy-five dollars for a couple, or if you'd like to do a full table of eight, four hundred dollars. And uh, you can go to our website epwvfca.org under the event tab. There's a banquet tab, and then that will lead you in and give you all of the information, and you could sign up there. Uh, we're asking also if if someone says, "Oh man, I've already got plans for that date," if you would be willing and and could donate uh, a seat, uh, maybe you you can go on register as as an individual and just let us know hey i won't be able to make it but that'll give us a chance to bring some of our student athletes as well and not have them you know have to to foot any kind of cost as well so that's awesome then on sunday so sunday the 29th is when we'll do more of what our fields of faith typically has been and that's our stadium event and we're going to do that up at musselman high school this year at waldeck field at denny price stadium and that'll be from 5 30 to 8 and that'll be our evening we're going to uh, start with some pizza and some drinks uh, we're going to do a little punt, pass, and kick competition. Remember that from the old oh, days yeah. of the NFL? Oh, yeah. yeah, so we're looking forward to getting some middle school and high schoolers out there. We'll, we'll probably try to have some prizes and divide them up into those two groups. And then we do have our, our, our teen worship band that will lead us in worship. We'll have some various testimonies and, uh, and a time of prayer and just really looking forward to uh, hopefully getting together a great group. And, again, that's open not just to teens, but if you want to come see – and hear what the Lord has been doing through FCA and, and just through, through our local churches and youth pastors and those who are pouring into these kids. Come on out and be a part of that event. From from listening to you, my friend, it sounds like this uh, this move has been everything you thought it would be and, and a million times more. Yeah, and it's it's overwhelming at times, to, to be honest with you, just how, how things have been going and, and the excitement level. But uh yeah, it's just, it's awesome. We had a, a meeting last night at Shepherd University, uh, about 15 or more students there. And um, I, I just, I get more fired up each time that I'm around them because of their excitement to be in God's word, you know, and, and to follow after the Lord. And, and so, uh, you know, to, to hear them and to interact with them in these conversations uh, about the Lord, about his word, about applying it in our everyday life just really is exciting. We have, uh, because of the the laws, coaches mm -hmm. can't lead teams in prayer, yeah. which is where a person like you would come in, Matt, yeah. or the players themselves. And I'm always fascinated, uh, the players who get selected to lead the prayer before a game. Some are better at it than others <laughs> because they don't just read verbatim a prayer that they know. Right. It's it's kind of you know freelancing your yeah. way through. Now, some of them put more into it than others. And and some of them are more gifted at it than others. We happen to have a very good uh, kid doing it uh, okay. uh, this year. Uh, one of our kids who did it a few years ago was honored at an FCA banquet in Frederick. Um, and uh, I was invited to attend that. And that was really a very nice experience. Uh, so I think your banquet will be uh, something that uh, if you should go to it if you can, because it was uh, wonderful to go to uh, because everybody's on the same page, mm -hmm. right? E everybody's there for a reason. Uh, everybody's a believer and uh, everybody's kind of locked in on doing the best for these kids yeah. and, and doing it in uh, a way which uh, I think we all agree is, is we, we try to be morally right about things mm -hmm. and try to all go into the same direction to come to a, a common goal on things. Yeah. If you love God and you love sports. We encourage you come come to this banquet and, and see what's going on and see how you may be involved. Um, and I'm not going to uh, mince any words in, in that you know we, we want you there to not only hear what's going on, but we hope that you catch the vision, mm -hmm. that that you catch the fire as well, and go, hey, how can I be involved? And and that may be through donations uh, financially, that may be through volunteering. Um, you know, we we did uh, para camps this past summer, a sports camp as well as an outdoors camp, and we have 45 volunteers 
years at one and 25 at another. And as those camps continue to grow, we had 89 kids at one camp and 60 kids at the other camp. And so as those numbers hopefully grow in summers to come, we always need volunteers. If you're in the school system and, and your school, uh, middle school, high school, college, uh, we don't really get into the elementary level, mm -hmm. uh, but but middle, high, and, and college, uh, if, if you're in a school and you say, hey, we don't have an FCA at our school, I, I'd be willing to help get something started. W we need those volunteers as well. I mentioned earlier board members. Um, obviously, we need prayer warriors, those that will say, hey, I will regularly pray over the ministry and the people that are involved, and I want to be on your newsletter list so I know how to pray and so forth. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that there will be many in our community that will come and, uh, and catch that fire to get involved. We have about 30 seconds left. Matt, again, how do you get tickets to the banquet? Tickets to the banquet, just go to our website, epwvfca.org. You'll see a section that says events or a tab at the top under events. You'll go to banquet, and then once you're in there, you'll see the registration button. All the information is there. Click it, and you can fill it out and, uh, and be ready to go. Good stuff. Thank you. Final minute coming up in a moment here. And